Good morning. Welcome to worship. We're happy to have you here to worship with us on this special Veterans Day weekend. We have two pre-service songs, and we hope you'll join and sing with us. Our first song is America the Beautiful.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this uh, time of worship. Another beautiful Michigan morning. It is. That God has almost given. Almost getting on a par with Oklahoma, <laughs> isn't it? Just about, almost. So, uh, and we'll see how long this lasts and everything. So, uh, this morning I noticed uh, when we were coming in and people were greeting us that uh, uh, Pastor Flug was. He was well, giving us some kind of. A... Yeah. <clears throat> He was, you know, armpit. Armpit. Uh, I, don't know. Okay. I was thinking of that uh, famous uh, characters on Red Skelton, uh, Gertrude and Heathcliff. Heathcliff, right? The seagulls. So, yes. So why don't we just green, greet one another? We just wing it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, Dave, with winger, but <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, very glad that so you. So, what are you here. preaching about today? We are preaching about our destination. Our destiny. That's a good uh, for... A term. We're preaching about terminal. About uh, the end of the church <laughs> here and uh, the church triumphant That's last right. week and the church militant. Right. So, and today also we recognize our veterans as a part of our worship service and uh, thank God for the gifts of so many people who serve in a variety of ways, Absolutely. including our military personnel. Do we have any announcements this morning? Kathy, if you would, please. I have two announcements. Sorry. Uh, good morning. Uh, a quick invitation to our women in the congregation. We're beginning a new study uh, on Sunday evenings at 7 o'clock on Zoom. It's an LWML study by Donna Pyle called I Surrender. There's a packet here at church. There's no video, so if you wanna just call in on your phone, that's okay. We invite you to participate. I believe it's a four-week study. And my second announcement is an update from the call committee. Uh, the call committee will be meeting this week to discuss our options with our existing call lists. We have at least one new pastor to consider. There will be a joint meeting with the elders and the church council on Tuesday evening, in which I will participate. So your prayers for the meetings this week and for the pastors on our call list are greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we focus on worship with a great uh, gospel hymn, Blessed Assurance.
invite you to stand. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Make haste, O God, to deliver us. O Lord, make make haste haste to help us. us. May all who seek the Lord rejoice and be glad in Him. May we say evermore, God is great. For Christ is coming soon. Soon Soon He he will descend descend from from the heavens. heavens. Soon He will raise the dead. And we We will will always be with with the Lord. Lord. He is our help and our deliverer. O Lord, do do not delay. delay. Indeed, Christ is coming soon to raise the dead, to bring us to everlasting life with Him. And yet there are times when we have lived as if Christ's return was not important and not eminent. Yet our Heavenly Father invites us to return to Him, ask for His forgiveness. And so we turn to our loving Father. Heavenly Father, we We confess confess that that we we have ignored ignored you and and our neighbors neighbors in need. need. We have sinned in our thoughts, words, and actions. We have failed by our inactivity. Forgive Forgive us, renew us, us, and lead us, O Lord, that that we might be encouraged by your presence and forgiven of our sins. God hears your confession, and he has promised to be with you always. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son, Jesus Christ, to die and rise for you, and for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We We are are forgiven. forgiven. We We look look for for the the return return of Jesus. Jesus. The Lord be with you. And And also with with you. And let us pray. O Lord, encourage us with your presence and your word and sacraments that we be strengthened for service to you and our neighbors as we await the return of Jesus. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Call on Pastor Don to recognize our veterans. Since it is very close to Veterans Sunday, uh, I mean uh, Veterans Day, we like to remember those or recognize those who have served in the military or who have uh, individuals serving now. And so uh, if, you, if there are any family members who uh, are anybody here who has family members presently serving in the military, would you please stand and announce who, who they are, if you would. Deanna? Okay. Do nuclear stuff. Okay. Is that me? I don't know. It sounds like it might be. Okay. We'll try to turn me off. Uh, those who are, vet, are veterans who have served previously, if you would stand. Mark or our Emil? Okay. So, okay. We want to, uh, again, thank you for your service. Thank uh, those who are presently uh, serving. And uh, Pastor Tom, would you please? Let's, we will do that. First Let's, of all, uh, yeah. Let's go to our God in prayer. How grateful we are, O oh Lord, for the freedom that you afford us. How blessed we are because of those who have served and continue to serve to make such freedom possible. Guard, strengthen, and bless them, O Lord, especially those who are currently separated from their families or who find themselves in difficult situations. Pray, Lord, that you would keep them and their families safe, even as you protect and keep our country from all harm and danger. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. And all of God's people said, Amen. 
these names of those who are currently serving. We pray for wisdom and guidance and physical and spiritual protection. Julie Aho, Ken Bracora, Michael Dobson, Tanner Hardit, Andrew Ingerson, Jeff Candler, Jeff Keller, Ryan Earl Kimbrell, Danielle Litchford, Kelly Lynch, Nick Mirabrat, Daniel Flug, Megan Saul, Joseph Schmidt, Mike and Jackie Sensko, Zach Short, Clinton Cheetoritas, David Cheetoritas, Jocelyn Chatteritas, Stephen Tucker, Ian Walker, and Chelsea Wenzel. Uh, we thank God for their service as well as all of our veterans. We carefully listen now to the Word of God. John. Good morning. Good morning. Our first lesson today is taken from Amos chapter 5, beginning with the 18th verse. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear, as though, he entered his, as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch dark without a ray of brightness? I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you will bring choice fellowship offerings, I have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, beginning with the 13th verse. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead will be in Christ, will rise first. After that, we are still alive, our left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Beyond my plans, beyond my plans. 
For our Savior, we stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel lesson this day is recorded for us in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, beginning with the first verse. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Now at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. Now the virgins who were ready went in with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Thank 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our text for the day is taken from the second lesson, uh, which uh, John read a few moments ago. Uh, especially the first and the last verses of that reading. I invite you to join with me. We, we believe that, that Jesus, Jesus died and rose again. again. <clears throat> and, and so we believe that, that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. And, and so, so we will be with the Lord forever. <clears throat> this will serve as our text for this morning. People of God, people whose faith is in Christ Jesus. About 25 years ago, uh, a miracle happened in a convenience store in a small town in Oklahoma. And uh, it was before GPSs uh, were very popular or very useful. And a man was driving with his family, and he stopped in the store to ask for directions. That was the miracle. Okay. <clears throat> now, but what was interesting to me is a conversation that followed. Uh, the uh, man came in and asked the young woman who was a clerk, could you give me some directions? Uh, the young woman answered, well, I can try. What's your destination? He said, well, I really haven't made up my mind about that yet. Without hesitation, the young woman said, then go out here, take a left on this street, go to the first intersection, take a right, and in about four blocks you're going to arrive at one of your destinations. So the man got back in his car and he was curious. And so he followed the young woman's directions and within just a few minutes he found himself driving into a cemetery. And as he stopped and looked around he said, well, I suppose she was right. That's probably one of my destinations. What's your destination? What's your destination? The last Sundays of the church here, as Pastor Tom mentioned earlier, help us to focus upon our destination. Uh, the last Sundays of the church here talk about the end times and the beginnings of time. It talks about the end times and referring, referring to uh, Christ's return on the last day, uh, the judgment of everybody as they stand before our Savior. But it also talks about the beginnings of times, the eternity uh, that God has prepared for us in Christ Jesus. So what's your destination? What's your destination? Uh, Pastor Elmer Kohlberg uh, was my supervisor when I was an intern, a vicar in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. This is a picture of the church there. And uh, he was an excellent mentor, uh, an excellent preacher, a tremendous service of, a servant of Christ Jesus, and a servant of Christ's people. Well, several years after Jane and I left Cedar Rapids, uh, Pastor Kohlberg was diagnosed with an advanced cancer. And he continued to preach and to serve the parish until his strength finally gave out. And then, shortly after that, he passed away. While he was still preaching, I phoned one of our friends who was uh, in Cedar Rapids and I asked, well, how is Pastor Kohlberg doing? And a friend told us, and he said, well, Pastor continues to preach very powerful sermons in spite of his declining strength. And we noticed that his sermons have taken a definite turn toward eternity. A definite turn toward eternity. What's your destination? And if we're taking a journey, it's always good to keep our destination in mind. And that is why God the Holy Spirit directed St. Paul to write these words of today's lesson. The Christians in Thessalonica were new to the faith. They had been raised in a culture and in all kinds of religions that gave no hope, no confidence, uh, no determination about their destination. But then God gave them the good news. God gave them the good news of Christ Jesus, the good news of Christ who crucified, who paid the full penalty of their sins, and so that as they stand before God, God declares them righteous, uh, not under His judgment. They received the good news of Christ, the risen one, who gave them a personal guarantee, a, an eternal warranty, promising that he would return on the last day, reunite their bodies and their souls, and that uh, bring them into his eternal presence. 
And that became their hope. That became their faith. That became their confidence. But the new Christians had questions that disturbed them. They had questions that disturbed them. They were very concerned about their loved ones who had passed away. You see, they thought that Jesus was going to return within the next week or two. And as the time lingered on, their loved ones passed away. And they began to wonder, what's going to happen now? Since their loved ones have passed away before the Lord returns, uh, what's, what's going to happen to them? Was the cemetery their destination? Uh, was uh, death their terminal? And that was the questions that they were raising. Now, terminal is a pretty harsh word uh, and a hard word. And for the life of me, I cannot understand why airports are called terminals. Uh, terminal has a finality about it. Uh, it's as if it's the final destination. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never had anybody come to me and excitedly report about their vacation. I've never had them come to me and say, oh, we flew into Miami, Florida, and, uh, and I had a wonderful time for two weeks. We uh, uh, stayed in the terminal. Uh, we looked at the walls on the inside of the terminal. We ate airplane food. Uh, we slept in those very comfortable uh, uh, chairs that are in the terminal. Never had anybody express that kind of joy. Terminal's the wrong word to use. And Maggie can verify that. It's not a terminal. It's a pass-through location. It's not designed to be the end. It's designed to help us get from one place into the next place that is going to be far more enjoyable, far more life. And so the new Christians in Thessalonica wondered about those who died and were buried. Was the grave their terminal? Was that the end of their story? Was that the end of their existence? They had questions. They had questions. And fortunately and thankfully, St. Paul had answers. But St. Paul makes it clear right at the very beginning, these were not answers that Paul came up with. He said, these are not answers that I found on the internet or on Facebook. Uh, these are not answers that are my own opinions. These are answers that come from the Lord himself. This is something that Jesus has taught. Answers given by the Lord Jesus himself, the one whom the grave could not hold on to or keep in lockdown. And so in between the words we have in our text, St. Paul then shares a teaching of Jesus which provides a brief outline <clears throat> of what's going to take place on the last day. Jesus will return visibly with a majesty and a glory that's going to be evident through all the universe. His arrival will be announced uh, with angels shouting out, uh, trumpets blowing, everybody brought to full attention. <clears throat> with one word spoken by the Lord, <clears throat> cemeteries are going to be empty. The dead will rise, bodies reunited with souls, and all of them brought before the Lord Jesus Christ, along with everybody who is still alive upon this earth. They'll be brought before the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Every knee shall bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. And the end result, the final destination, is summed up, in this brief sentence, we will be with the Lord forever. We will be with the Lord forever. You see, the message is clear. The message is clear. Death is not the destination. Cemeteries are not the terminal. They are the pass-through locations. God provides life ahead. <clears throat> life is the destination. Eternity is the promise, an eternal life guarantee, <clears throat> an eternal life warranty. That's what was given to the new Christians at Thessalonica. And that was radically different from what they were raised with. 
the people of Thessalonica in the Roman world 2,000 years ago, <clears throat> before they became Christians, uh, didn't have that kind of hope what, at, at all. The inscriptions on tombs in the catacombs like these uh, underneath, uh, in, uh, underneath Rome, the inscriptions that were left on the catacombs were cries of horror, were cries of despair. Life is over. Despair. Eternal grief. Can you imagine having that as an epitaph on your tombstone? That's where people were writing on their gravesite. And the writings of the unbelieving philosophers from that time state basically the same thing. Over and over again, they say, once you die, all you've got to look forward to is barely existing. That's the very best that you can look forward to, is having some little bit of life uh, for eternity. We could say that those were the messages written on the subway walls and abandoned, abound, abandoned buildings some 2,000 years ago. All of them. Messages of hopelessness. Messages of despair. It's a message that is being repeated in our world today. What a contrast the good news gave. What a contrast the good news continues to be. Tell, say it with me. We will be with the Lord forever. Say it again. With, we, we will be, be with, with the, the Lord, Lord forever. forever. Not living under the judgment of God. Not just a bare existence. Instead, living surrounded and folded with the grace, the mercy, the love of God. That's our destination. That's our destination. That's the end result. That's the goal that our Lord Jesus has provided for us. St. Paul was so sure of the faithfulness of Jesus, so sure of the faithfulness of Jesus, that he even talked about those who have died as being asleep. Just like a person is asleep is going to wake up again, so the message that is given, those who have died in Christ are asleep. They will be awakened by the Lord Jesus Christ. And they will live forever. That's the promise. That's the certainty. So what? So what does this mean for us? What it means for us is we have a destination that's already provided for us. We know what our destination is. We don't know exactly what route it's going to take to get to it. But we do know what our destination is. And so we can look forward, living toward the goal toward the destination. We can live lives of confidence because we know where we're going. Now in our study, One Nation Under God, Healing Racial Divides in America, Pastor Haney asked a very interesting question. When did we stop believing that God will catch us? When do we stop believing that God will catch us? And he used the illustration of uh, his children when they were young that they would excitedly jump off the bed or they'd jump off the slide or, or playground equipment, jump off knowing that he was going to catch them. But as they got older, they stopped doing that. And uh, because they were no longer sure that their dad would catch them. So Pastor Haney asks us, when did we stop believing that God will catch us? When did we stop believing that? When did we stop believing that God has the power to conquer problems of this life that we face? When did we stop believing that God can bring healing into a world that is so split apart, so divided with hatred and slander? When did we stop saying, uh, well, God, this problem is just too big for you to handle. I'll take care of it myself. When did we start saying that? And how good has that ever been in our lives? That's never been a good idea. And then Pastor Haney continues. 
If God was able to conquer the divide and separation between him and our sin, surely he has the power to end the resources to conquer the divides in our society. St. Paul would continue on by saying this, if God has the power uh, to uh, conquer the cemetery and bring us into eternal life, then surely he can do anything else that we are faced with. So live as ones who trust that God will catch us. Live as ones who trust that he will give us the strength each day as we need it. Are there problems ahead? Detours? Yes. Sin? Discouragement? Difficulties? Yes, yes, and yes. But life is ahead. Life is ahead. That's the promise of God. The faithfulness of God is ahead. The love, the grace, the mercy of God is ahead. Our destination is not terminal. Our destination is eternal. That's the radical message of the gospel. That's the radical message of the gospel. And so God calls us to live each day with our destination in mind with his destination for us in mind. That's the so what aspect of the promise of our text, of the promise of our God. Now another so what aspect of this message is to understand that the message is a pass-through message. That it's not designed just for me to hold on to. God designs the good news as a pass-through message. In other words, it's a message for us to hold on to and at the same time to pass along to others so that they might have the assurance of the destination he has provided for them. Uh, a man had a, a Sunday school class of three boys and uh, one morning he brought a box of donuts uh, to the class and the boys were definitely interested in the class that day and they were definitely glad that they showed up for the class. And the teacher told them uh, that they could have the donuts, but first he had a job for them to do. He had placed notes in the, um, in the church building, one note for each of the boys. And he said, here's what you got to do. I'll tell you where to go to find your particular note. You need to follow the directions on that, and then you have to return within five minutes in order to have a donut. And so the boys were very excited about that. He gave each one of them, told each one of them where they would find their note and started to watch. Five minutes went, uh, so the boys excitedly ran out. After five minutes, all three of the students were back in the classroom. The first boy was already eating some of the donuts. He had found his note. The note gave him directions that led him right back to the classroom and to the donuts. The second boy reported that he had found his note and it had very specific directions on it, but when he followed the directions, he wound up at a hall closet. And he stayed there for a while, and finally when the five minutes were up, he returned back to the classroom. The third boy said he spent his entire five minutes looking for the note, but he couldn't find one. And finally, he also returned. Well. The Sunday school teacher laughed and told them that uh, that's the way that he had designed it. And he said, here, have, have, uh, uh, have some donuts. And then he continued by explaining this way. He said, the first note was similar to the message of the gospel. The first note is similar to the message of the gospel. It gives good direction back to the donuts. But uh, for the gospel, it tells us then, gives us directions in Christ Jesus that bring us into the life eternal. The second note also had directions, but the directions led the boy away from the donuts. And the Sunday school teacher said, that's the directions that are often given, that's the directions given by many religions in our world today. Many religions in our world today give us all kinds of direction. Even the religion of none give us directions. But the problem is, they take us away from Christ. They take us away from the treasure that he has provided for us. 
And he said to the third boy, he said, I, not, I didn't leave a note for you. There was no note there. Because that's the way it is for so many people in our world today. They haven't had a clue. They haven't heard anything about Jesus. They have no knowledge whatsoever about how to come to eternal life. And so they are the ones who need someone to bring the note to them. Wrong directions, no directions, reliable directions. Thanks be to God that we have received directions that turn us to Him and His faithful love for us in Christ Jesus. And thanks be to God who gives us the opportunities to help others receive direction to their Savior and to ours to make sure that they get the note. So people of God, people whose faith is in Christ Jesus, what's our destination? What's our destination? Terminal? No, not terminal. Eternal. Eternal. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. And so we will be with the Lord forever. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Not terminal, eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We rise and confess our faith, professing our faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pastor Tom, would you please lead us in prayer? Pastor Don, thanks for that great message. I used to work for United Airlines, and I can tell that you want to fly the friendly skies. Yes, that was an awesome message. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, through you all things were made. You have entrusted us with the care of all creation. Embolden us to be good and faithful stewards of all that you have made until you return to dwell with us again. For until you return, we pray, come, come quickly, quickly, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. And Lord Jesus, in your earthly life, you suffered much at the hands of lawless men. Be with all those who suffer now through abuse, illness, or injustice. Especially, Lord, those that we now name before you in our hearts. We pray for A.I. and Keith, Erica, and Mark, Darlene, and Gary, and Mary, and Ken, and Grace. We also pray for uh, Dick St. Julian, Brenda Kushner's brother, diagnosed with kidney failure. We pray for Bill, diagnosed with prostate cancer. We pray for Carl, Diane's brother, undergoing surgery. We pray for Kenzie, recovering from two surgeries after being in a car accident. We pray for Harrison, healing for a broken arm. Barb and Steve, recovering from COVID. Heather, resuming chemo. Mike, recovering from heart valve surgery. We pray for healing for Terry, for the Johnson family. We pray for Carolyn Borman, kidney failure and recovering from a diabetic coma. We pray for Betty. We pray for a 21-year-old woman with breast cancer beginning chemotherapy. And we also pray, Lord, for those that we now name before you in our hearts. Heal them according to your will. For until you return, we pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus. 
And Lord Jesus, by your death and resurrection, you destroyed death forever. While we look forward to the resurrection, each human being still faces earthly death. We bring before you all of those who are mourning the death of loved ones. Comfort them with your presence and the certainty of the resurrection to eternal life. For until you return, we pray. Come Come quickly, quickly, Lord Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus, be present in your church. Give us your Holy Spirit so that we walk together with you, bringing your gospel to all nations. For until you return, we pray. Come Come quickly, quickly, Lord Jesus. Jesus. And Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of lords and the King of kings. We pray that all of our elected and appointed officials may acknowledge your power and mercy and may seek your wisdom so that all within this world may experience your justice and peace. We especially pray for our nation in this time of uncertainty. We pray for those who are elected. We pray for the process that still continues. Lord, we pray for our nation as a whole. We also ask, as we prayed before, bless those who protect us, military personnel, first responders, police, firefighters, and those who continue to serve on the COVID front lines. For until you return, we pray, come Come quickly, quickly, Lord Lord Jesus. Jesus. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And it is in his name that we are bold to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. I'll get that. Okay, thank you. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. And eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the wise of a hundred circling camps. righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. He has sounded for the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him, be jubilant. 